It's been 100 years since the U.S. passed the 19th Amendment, first giving women the right to vote. That was a monumental step in our country's history. It was also quite a celebration a century ago when 8 million women cast votes in that first election. Now, according to the last government census, there are roughly 84 million women eligible to vote. Pretty exciting. It took more than politics and protests to change history, however. Jewelry played a surprising role in the movement. Before we dive into the jewelry, let's do a quick history lesson. Women battling for the right to vote were called suffragettes, and it wasn't just American women who fought for this right. British women were organizing as early as 1897, and the fight even got violent at times. We saw this depicted in the recent movie Suffragette, where Meryl Streep played Emmeline Pankhurst, founder of a group that became known as the Women's Social and Political Union. This sisterhood of women used their jewelry to empower and unite them in this fight. Now, the tactics used by the WSPU would have stayed across the pond, as they say, if it hadn't been for Alice Paul from New Jersey, who was studying abroad in England in 1907. Alice joined the movement in Britain and then returned home in 1910, forming the National Women's Party here in the U.S. It's here we should also mention Susan B. Anthony. This trailblazer gained national attention when, in 1872, she illegally voted and defiantly refused to pay a $100 fine, resulting in a trial that brought women's suffrage to the forefront. The suffragettes were brave, strong women and numbered by the thousands. The jewelry they wore, everything from mass-produced to homemade one-of-a-kind pieces, became known as suffrage jewelry. Its primary purpose was to demonstrate someone's allegiance to the cause. In the movie, you may not have noticed the jewelry Meryl Streep was wearing or known its significance, but it was quite symbolic of the movement. Fashions and styles of the day were of the Edwardian period, a time when women's fashions took on a whole new level of opulence inspired by the hedonistic lifestyle of Britain's King Edward VII. When Streep's character steps out on the balcony to address the suffragettes, she's wearing a pin on her collar known as the Holloway brooch. It was designed by Sylvia Pankhurst, the actual daughter of the woman who started Britain's movement, Emmeline Pankhurst. The Holloway brooch was given to women who had done time in the largest female prison in Europe, Holloway Prison, where ladies were locked up for their militant suffragette activity. Up to 200 suffragettes were being admitted each day, and once in prison, women continued their protests, going on hunger strikes and demanding to be designated as political prisoners. The Holloway brooches were handmade of silver by Toy & Company in London. They depicted the portcullis symbol of the House of Commons, along with a superimposed broad arrow, which is the convict symbol, in purple, green, and white enamel. In 2018, a Holloway brooch sold for $6,000 at auction. There's one on permanent display at the Museum of London, along with a hunger strike pin. These hunger strike pins have a silver bar at the top engraved with the words for valor. There's a silver circle at the bottom engraved with the name of the suffragette on one side and hunger strike on the other. The medal on display at the Museum of London's suffragette collection belonged to Leonora Tyson, a woman sentenced to two months of hard labor for breaking windows at government offices. She went on a hunger strike for 22 days. Did you notice the ribbon on that hunger strike pin? It incorporates the color scheme of the suffragette movement. The colors purple, white, and green were chosen for their symbolism. Purple stood for the royal blood that flowed through the veins of every suffragette. White stood for the purity in their lives, and green was the color of hope. These colors made for a pin that not only advertised their views, but was also eye-catching. The colors also represented the popular jewelry and gemstones of the day. In the latter half of the 19th century, Demantoy Garnet was discovered in the Ural Mountains of Russia. Its bright, beautiful green color inspired a Demantoid fever that raged throughout Europe. Peridot was another green gem super popular during this period. It was apparently a favorite of King Edward VII, so it was incorporated in a lot of the jewelry produced in Great Britain from the mid-1800s until World War I. Now, if you'll remember that color wheel you studied in art class, green and purple are complementary colors, so pairing Demantoid Garnet and Peridot with popular purple gems like Amethyst or Rhodolite Garnet was a winning combination. 
add in pearls or diamonds or even white enamel, which was also popular during this time, and you've got the colors used in the jewelry during the suffragette movement. The Museum of London's permanent suffragette display includes numerous jewelry pieces, including this enameled silver pendant with amethyst stones. It was made by artist Ernestine Mills, who was an English metal worker and enameler, and also a suffragette. The pendant represents a winged figure of hope singing outside the prison bars and is attached to a chain with stones of purple, white, and green. This is one of three pieces by Mills on display in London. In 1908, a renowned London jeweler, Mappin and Webb, dedicated a page of its Christmas catalog to purple, white, and green suffragette jewelry, offering high-end pieces to elegant non-combatants like the mom, played by Glynis Johns, from Disney's 1964 classic, Mary Poppins. In the United States, suffragettes were likely to also wear celluloid buttons, which was a recent invention. They used this simple item to promote their cause and millions of buttons were distributed and proudly worn. The first National American Women's Suffrage Association button featured 12 stars, representing the first states where women could vote. Now, when it comes to jewelry and the American suffragettes, there's plenty of evidence that the average radical suffragette not only wore the buttons and jewelry for the cause, but they also sold jewelry to support the cause as well. In August of 1914, the Washington Post ran an article titled, Women Give Jewelry, detailing how some prominent women were the first to give up gold and silver to be melted down to help advance the cause. Some of the items were so special that they were put up for sale rather than melted down. Between melting gold and silver down to support the cause, the selling of personal valuables to survive during the Great Depression, and an entire century of time, there's just not much suffrage jewelry left anymore. After the 19th Amendment was ratified in the US in 1920, it took another eight years before women won the battle in the UK. It's also important to note that it took another 45 years before African-American women were given their right to vote with the passage of the Voting Rights Act in 1965, which made voting easier and more equitable for all women. We hope this video has served as a reminder of what our ancestors went through to ensure equal voting rights for women. The next time you head out to the polls, I'd suggest you go look in your grandmother's or great-grandmother's jewelry box first and see if you can find any suffragette treasures. Who knows what you might find, and as for me, I'm wearing jewelry to support the cause too, with my vote necklace and a ring in the colors of the suffragette movement. For now, add a check mark emoji below with some hearts and suffragette colors. And of course, like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks for watching.